In the 1950s, East London was becoming overcrowded and the apartheid government decided it needed a magnet to draw the coloured population away from the white suburbs. In 1962, 300 low-cost homes were built near the textile factory just west of East London suburbs and in 63, its first inhabitants moved in. This was the birth of Mtanzane, the township. With the help of the Buffalo City Municipality, we managed to visit a number of different schools in Tanzania, namely Pilani Senior Primary, Nawonga Junior Primary, and Sitembiso Secondary School. They don't last. They're not those single desks we used to have. They break, the planks break the, the, at the back. Okay. This is our school hall. Everything that is an, a major event so they take place here if it's not happening outside the classrooms. No busy staff meeting because of the Shara Abanazu's tool. And this is some of the material that we got from, it was said to be from overseas, these cupboards. They do help us because that is where we try and keep our, our books. Amandwa Nesinabwa Pe School went by 309. We finish our scenario in so much that Ukalila ko grade R, grade R, no grade one. Si si ba itele, ba spa itele is dulo emakaya. Emakaya nas is a school. Si vele kaya nis. Nabo nis as si bensi si ko grade R, a enyo genaso. Ba ti besi a ufiga pe ngo ko grade four. Si pele. Otherwise, this There are no new writing boards. Sometimes the teachers cannot even write on the boards. They are falling. The furniture is, 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 is one of the biggest problems that we're having here. Uh, as you can see here right now, you know, um, there's no furniture, there are no desks, not enough chairs, and that has always been our problem for quite a number of years. It's not a good situation, and it, it actually affects our day-to-day, um, -day, you know, uh, work. During our visit to Sitembiso Secondary School, we met with Nongana Dokas, a grade 12 student who had the following to say. We need chairs, basically, desks to sit on. Um, the gate, yeah, the, there's only one caretaker and he can't an handle all of us. We had to put on these doors, buckler doors, you know, because we had a problem with security. alarms. <laughs> In a computer room, sa install a computer room, sa install an alapi office in. Aya lapi office in, Gwenzeka into a quat sikumke umbani. So, zizi function and umbani, what you call umka umbani can go kuatatba as sibins. Banis dilabati parachute. Mangena a piece of little fin. Mangena a pair of fin, Oganim Clambi, Mangena per office in. I've been the old old tango, Clambi, as all securities and business name lay. No, they have to upgrade the standard, you see, of the like fence, of fencing this area, 
you see, and gates, they must be fenced also, you see. And you can see even the doors are not locked properly, you see. That's the main problem that they've got here. Yeah, check it, check Says in the case, but it's coming up for my nanga and do a very bad light. Mdanzane was the second largest township in southern Africa, housing over 600,000 black South Africans who grapple daily with the challenges of unemployment, poverty, crime, and rampant diseases like tuberculosis and AIDS. Its rows of modest homes line street after street in the rolling hills outside a small industrial port city in the eastern Cape province. Youth-headed households are an increasing concern in the townships of South Africa as a result of the AIDS pandemic. The number of youth-headed homes is said to grow considerably by the year 2010. Children as young as nine head households looking after ailing parents, grandparents and their siblings. On our visit to Mtanzani, we met with Pumla Kozongo, who has been living with HIV for the last two years, assisted by her eight-year-old daughter. HIV positive. The <laughs> We met with a young woman by the name of Vuyokazi Kaula in NU6, a section in Mtanzania, who explained to us the difficulties they have with the household chores that they have to do on a daily basis. <laughs> Yes, good to the land of Zandri. Who is sent us to the Zandas at the Wogos Boom? We tell you, I tell you, take a cool walk now, Kalu to Tamaz Park, Lampon, Pina, Pesha. So I tell you, good amounts, Lampon for Inga Pesha. Never say I'm bit distance with a swan amounts, so I toil up and talk, okay, as not on end as always says in the Gunzin. We met with Katie with Jack, who has been living with HIV for the last three years, assisted by her 12 year old who too suffers from the pandemic. Seventy nine, I'm HIV positive. Three years. Yes. No papa. No papa. Just break with us but 
Sometimes they are breaking the doors or the toilet window there, they breaking that window and get inside mm -hmm. and assault people there inside, you see, and maybe stab them and then so that they can take those stuff there inside. People are poor here, the side, no? So uh, some of them, uh, uh, it's not working. Some of them are pensioners. But those who can afford to, uh, to buy new doors and put burglars on to prevent all this. Yeah, because it's only the houses, they don't have burglars. And the poor doors, it's been, it's the victims of these house breakings. Some of these doors are, are old, so they, it's just double doors. They only kick the bottom one, you see, because very old. Now they're kicking that one open and they enter in. Get inside, take everything. To attend to house breakings, uh, sometimes we arrive late there at the scene because most of these houses don't have numbers on. Because there's no street names, so we depend on numbers. Mm -hmm. So we have to look around for these numbers. So that's why we are trying now to to help them in this problem. After a week in Mtanzani, it was clear to all of us that the people living here have a very strong spirit and are committed to improving the state of their townships. It was not surprising to get back home to Cape Town and find a message from Pumla Kozongo, one of the interviewees living with HIV, reading as follows. Mornings are God's way of saying one more time. Live life, make a difference. Touch one heart, encourage one mind, inspire one soul.